2023 was the worst wildfire season on record across Canada. And in this edition of In the Know, we are taking a look back. First, we're going to start with this. This time lapse starts in May, and it shows us the wildfires that started to spark across the country. And as we go through July and into August, the smoke plumes continue to rise. The situation just became worse and worse, especially across Western Canada. BC had its worst wildfire season on record and the McDougal Creek fire in West Kelowna that made huge headlines. It started in mid August. It took until the 21st of September for this fire to be considered held. So finally losing that out of control status. It destroyed 190 homes in the Okanagan. This really was a key ignition in the big stories that unfolded out of BC. And meteorologist Rhythm Reed joins us right now. Rhythm, we know it wasn't just a story for British Columbia. Almost every province and territory across Canada had a story when it came to wildfires that really disrupted the lives of Canadians this summer. Absolutely, and when we're taking a look at the total amount of wildfires our area burnt this year, it's not even a competition. We're at 18.5 million hectares burned and taking a look at the previous years, it's not even close. When we're taking a look at the individual provinces and territories, we're used to seeing very large amounts of wildfires towards the west, but even towards the east, Atlantic Canada ending up at 522 wildfires just started this year. 6,573 wildfires recorded across our country and rhythm. We knew when we looked at the snowpack back last winter, the drought that started going into the spring, there were alarm bells really early in the season that this season could be bad. Exactly. And I want to start with Atlantic Canada because it's a perfect example of what happened. Taking a look at this drought monitor, Focusing in on Nova Scotia particularly, it was that low amount of snow in the winter and that dry spring that continued to bring dry conditions across the area, igniting some of the worst wildfires that they have seen. Oh, you got it, Rhythm. The Barrington Lake Blaze, largest wildfire in Nova Scotia history. That happened right at the end of May. The Tintalan wildfire, that was just outside of Halifax, uprooted 16,000 people. And when all was totaled up, there was about $165 million in an uninsured damages. It was a horrible start to the wildfire season. And we know that the wildfire stories, they didn't end in Atlantic Canada. It seemed like Atlantic Canada finally got it under control with wildfires. Then the floods hit. That was a whole other weather story. And then, of course, Ontario and Quebec, and then especially Western Canada sparked up. And we're going to talk about Kelowna and we're going to talk about Yellowknife because when we're taking a look at August, when it comes to this drought monitor, Kelowna, extreme dryness, and even up towards Yellowknife. Yellowknife only recorded about two millimeters of rain halfway through their month and generally they would get up to 39. That really did not help all of the wildfires that were continuing to ignite causing for those mass evacuations. So we had the drought and then we also had very warm temperatures too. Yeah, so above seasonal temperatures, when we're taking a look back at summer right across the nation, definitely towards the north as well. We did expect a little bit with this as we transition to that El Nino pattern for the west, but definitely even towards the east, above normal to say the least. Now I want to focus in on Alberta because you have some interesting stats here for Alberta. Some wildfires human caused, but others, well, Mother Nature. Mother Nature does take control at the end of the day sometimes. When it does come to lightning, when we're taking a look at Alberta, 35% of those wildfires were based on that. Even towards BC, we had some events of dry lightning igniting more fires. All right, Rhythm, thank you so much for this recap 2023 wildfire season.